How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and today we're going to be talking about something that I think everyone can get excited about because it literally is something that everyone uses, that is Wi-Fi. More specifically, there's a new Wi-Fi security protocol called WPA3 coming out to supersede WPA2, which most people use now. Now you might be thinking, oh that's boring, oh, how could that be exciting? But it actually is very interesting and has some big, big improvements over what we use now. There's a lot of issues with WPA2 that we can talk about, that we have talked about in the past, and then we can discuss why WPA3 is very relevant and will be more convenient for you. So first of all, if you're not familiar with WPA and what all that means, it's basically just a security protocol for Wi-Fi. And first we had WEP, and that was really old from like the 90s. Then in 2003, we got WPA, and then in 2004, we got WPA2. And these are just to secure the connection between your computer or your device and your Wi-Fi router. And the idea is you don't want people spying on what you're doing, so you have a passcode, and using that passcode, it encrypts the connection. And like I said, WPA2 has been around for a while, since 2004, so it's about time we got an upgrade. It was announced by Wi-Fi Alliance very recently. And keep in mind, this is not a new protocol for Wi-Fi itself. It's not like AC or N or anything like that that's going to speed up Wi-Fi. It's just the security part. So those are separate things. Anyway, I'm sure at this point you're wondering what the actual differences are with WPA3, and there are four main improvements that the Wi-Fi Alliance has announced. First of all, there's going to be robust protection for poor passwords even. So even if someone has a bad password, it's going to prevent brute force attacks by actually limiting how often you can guess a password. So right now, presumably, you can basically try as many passwords on a router as you want. So you can try thousands a second. So if someone has a really bad password with no numbers and letters or anything, then it's not gonna take very long at all for a hacker to guess that password. With this, with the limiting factor, then you might only be able to try a few, so even if a hacker tries to brute force it or use a dictionary attack, it's gonna be so slow where it probably wouldn't even be worth it. But, of course, you still wanna use a relatively strong password even if this is the case, because you can never be too secure. So maybe something easy to remember, but also a little bit longer, not like a four letter word, but maybe a couple words long, you'll probably be fine. The next feature, which I would say is the biggest feature, is individualized encryption per user. So what this means is that even if you're connecting without a password, if you're using a public Wi-Fi hotspot, your connection will still be encrypted. So right now how it works, it's actually not that great. If you connect to a secure Wi-Fi hotspot with a password, then like I said, it uses that password to encrypt your connection. If there's no password on the Wi-Fi hotspot, like a public one out in the open, then there's no encryption at all. Anyone listening can see what is going on between you and that router. Obviously, that is really bad, so with this, even if you are connecting to a public Wi-Fi hotspot, it'll still be encrypted, which solves so many problems, because I've been talking in the past about how if you're even at like a hotel, or if you're at Starbucks or something using the Wi-Fi, you would have to use something like a VPN to encrypt all your traffic through a tunnel before you use the Wi-Fi hotspot, because obviously, again, you do not want anyone listening in on that. Also, another bad thing, even if you do use a secure password, then say it's a, a secure hotspot, but it's at like a convention or something, and everyone else is using that same password. Well, if one person knows the password, then they can decrypt everyone else's connection. So it's really good for home Wi-Fi, where only a couple people know the password, but if the password's like posted on the wall or something, you're not really any more protected. So presumably the individualized encryption means that every single person is going to have their own encryption key, so you're going to be secure no matter what. It's really just better in every way, and that alone is a really good reason why you should start using it as soon as it does become available. Now the third feature is that WPA3 will have stronger encryption. It'll use a 192-bit key length key, so that's a lot stronger than the current one, which is 128-bit, which is even still yet to be cracked, but again, I guess they're figuring future-proof, so 192 is just really strong. 
And some of you might say, wait a minute, I thought it was 256 bit, but it's based on a 128 bit key length and it's kind of like upscaled, I guess you could say. We're not gonna get into that. The encryption is stronger. That's really all you have to know. And finally, the fourth feature is actually pretty cool and it makes it a lot easier for devices with very small screens or no screens at all to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot. So imagine a smart device at home. Right now, say you have, I don't know, a vacuum or something, a smart vacuum robot that you want to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Well, obviously that might not have a screen on it and especially not a keyboard that you can type the password into. Right now, maybe that device creates a Wi-Fi hotspot, then you use your phone to connect to the robot's Wi-Fi hotspot and then type in the password and then disconnect from that and then it connects to the Wi-Fi hotspot and uses the password you just typed in. It's a mess, right? Well, with this, presumably what you would be able to do is basically use NFC. You basically hold up your phone to that device if it's certified with WPA3 and has all those features. You hold it up, automatically gets that password, automatically connects to the network, you're done. So it should make it a lot easier for devices that are either very small or it doesn't make sense to have a screen on them. It'll just be easier to set stuff up with Wi-Fi. So obviously I would say that really all of these new features are awesome and there might be small ones they add in that they haven't really talked about. Those are the main four. And you might be wondering, when are we gonna be able to use this awesome new security? Well, it's actually out right now. The standard is out and finalized, but the first devices that use it might take a while. Probably this year, we'll start to see them trickle out. Maybe the first couple routers from like cutting edge ones, you know, like Linksys might release one that has like the first WPA3, even if devices can't really use it yet. And then probably the end of next year, I'm sure we'll start to get phones that will actually use it. I'm not sure if a software update will be able to update devices to be able to use WPA3. I hope it will, though it will be backwards compatible. So if you're running a router that uses WPA3, then it will be able to use the same WPA2 security if that's all that a phone will support, but it'll still be able to do WPA3 if there are devices that you use that have it. But even with all this, it's not like WPA2 is gonna be disappearing anytime soon. First of all, because obviously, like we talked about, it's gonna take a while for WPA3 to be implemented in new devices, and there's probably a lot of devices that might never be updated, so they would have to still be supported in the long run as well. So I'm sure that, don't worry, if you're not gonna upgrade your devices, you'll still be able to use it. It's not like you're gonna be insecure, but still good to keep an eye on. Any new devices that have WPA3, that could be an awesome feature. And when these devices do come out, maybe you could suggest to your local coffee shop, hey, you should get a WPA3 device, it'll be a lot more secure. Or if you run a business or something, again, that's a good way to upgrade right away, it's a decent reason. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Not much more else to say about this, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Are you excited about this as I am? I know it's super nerdy to be excited about Wi-Fi encryption, but hey, what can I say? It's pretty cool and it will be directly useful. But if you guys wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also be sure to enable notifications or else YouTube literally might not even show you new videos even if you do subscribe. So you can click the bell next to the subscribe button. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.